Wellspring Church of All Nations presents Screams in the Desert, hosted by Pastors George and Sharon Stoker. dynamic Las Vegas couple bring the life-changing Word of God alive through anointed prophetic ministry. Their teaching causes mountain-moving faith to bring the victory of God's love to bear on the everyday issues of life. Join George and Sharon now as they share with you the secrets and joys of a fulfilling, abundant, spirit-filled, and spirit-led life. Well, welcome to the house of the Lord. It's a good night in God. Somebody had a good day. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Praise the Lord. It's been an awesome day. And um, I, I've been impressed all day how blessed we are to be able to praise the Lord. You say, well, it's, we should praise the Lord. But to be able to praise the Lord, to have a voice, to have uh, a body that will respond, to be able to breathe and to sing, and to play instruments and have instruments to play even and to be able to uh, enjoy uh, praising the Lord. Thank you. Uh, there's an old Jewish idiom that says die anew, it would have been enough. I remember uh, Dr. Dunbar used to say that all the time. It would have been enough if he just saved me, but instead of just saving me, he healed me. And it would have been enough if he just healed me, but instead of healing me, just healing me, he Fill me with the Holy Ghost. And it would have been enough if he just filled me with the Holy Ghost. But instead of that, he delivered me. And when you start thinking about all the things that God has done in our lives, it doesn't matter whether we've been uh, walking with the Lord a number of years or if we've just started walking with the Lord. There are lots of reasons to praise him. And yet we get mired down in what is going on around us now. And I was, so, I was thinking about this this morning and in Luke 19 this is when uh, Jesus was coming into uh, Jerusalem uh, Paul Sunday actually and the people greeted him and were loudly praising him and extolling him for all the miracles that he had done and all the things that they had seen and witnessed and uh, the Pharisees told them to be quiet they were making too much noise and that sort of thing and and uh, Jesus said something that I think was very, um, very good. He said, I, he replied, I tell you that if these keep silent, the very stones will cry out. Now there's other scriptures in the Bible that talk about the stones crying out. In Habakkuk 2.11, if you want to turn there, Habakkuk 2.11, it says that... Um, the stones will cry out of the wall built in sin to accuse you. The beam of the woodwork will answer it, agreeing it's charged with you. So there's plenty of reasons uh, that it says here that this, the rocks cry out. And uh, I remember when we first got cassette tapes. Most of you probably don't remember when we first got cassette tapes. <laughs> Eight tracks and cassette tapes with the little black stuff on them, you know, the little black lines. And that was supposed to be made out of silicone or out of stone. What was it, Bill, that those cassettes were made out of? Some kind of a rock. And so then people made a joke and they said, well, see, the rocks even praise him because the, the cassettes carry the noise. Well, that, that's a, a good thing. I mean, we can talk about even um, pieces of computers being silicone, pieces of rock, and containing praise to God, containing music, containing songs. But... I, it, so there was not, not a strange thing that the rocks would cry out and praise him if the people didn't. All creation cries out and praises God. All creation. And yet we, as people, as a unique creations, are equipped to where we can sing. Now my dogs, they might try to sing, but they just don't sing too harmoniously. You understand what I'm saying? I mean, they can howl pretty good occasionally, but 
Uh, but people have the ability to harmonize, to come together and, and to become like a symphony to God. And that's what's talked about when you, the two or more of you gather together in harmony. You gather together and make a symphony together of prayer. A symphony together of prayer or praise. Then God is in the midst of you and it says that, that he'll do whatsoever you ask when you pray that prayer of agreement. Or you praise in agreement. And I'm thinking that it's an amazing thing. Uh, some people will say, well, I can't sing. But you're cheating yourself if you say you can't sing. I mean, you're really cheating yourself. Because everybody can sing somehow. Everybody can sing. Everybody can make a joyful noise to the Lord. And you may not think you're able to harmonize. However, when you start singing, you can be amazed at how it does sound. Uh, we were singing um, a song in a cappella this morning, which uh, was very interesting, and it sounded wonderful. We don't need all the instruments to praise the Lord. Instruments enhance our ability to praise the Lord. I think one of the greatest experiences that I had, and you may have been there, Dr. Don Arnold, was when we were in Israel, and we were at a uh, having breakfast, and there were a lot of tours in the uh, dining area, and they came from all different nations, Christian tours. Were you there then? And, and a lady sat down at the piano, and she started playing, This is the Day that the Lord Has Made. Mm -hmm. And just a simple chorus. And now this has been years ago, so that was like a new song <coughs> back then. And uh, then somebody picked it up in French, and they started singing with her in French. And then somebody else picked it up in Tagalog, and somebody else picked it up in uh, uh, another language, and uh, so Italian. I mean, we ended up, the whole place was singing this song in different languages. It was very unique. Everybody was singing it in their own language. The Chinese were singing it in their dialect. Mm -hmm that were in these, and there were that many nations represented. There were that many nations represented in that, that big place where the many tours came and went. And it was a symphony of spontaneous praise unto God. And it was marvelous. So it doesn't matter whether we all speak the same language. It really doesn't matter if you're singing the same song, actually. If you can just go with the, with the melody, you can sing anything you want. Amen? Amen. But the thing is that it rises to God as a sweet smell and savor. And many times uh, we can say, oh, I praise God in my, on my own. Well, that's good. That's really good. But something happens when the dynamic comes together that we all begin to praise the Lord together. When we all begin to sing a song to God, singing in the spirit or singing in the natural. And uh, I know that... Um, I mean, I wasn't particularly a great singer, and still I'm not a great singer. But I'm going to sing. Amen? You know, we have to sing unto God, because he gave us a voice and the ability to do it. Amen? Amen. And I think that some of you have experienced that yourselves. Some of us like to sing in the shower. Mm -hmm. We really sound good in the shower. <laughs> it's great in the shower. I used to like to sing in the car with all the windows rolled up with the track and, and sing in the car. That was a good place to practice singing with a track uh, to, uh, to maybe uh, minister to people in song with a track. And um, it never sounded quite the same when I got to the microphone, but it really sounded good in the car. <laughs> but there is this wholehearted <coughs> giving of praise to God. And that's why I asked Pastor to to sing for us today Psalm 65, which he wrote that melody. Uh, now the Amplified says, Psalm 65, 1, it says, To you belongs silence, this is the Amplified, the submissive wonder of reverence which bursts forth into praise. And praise is due and fitting to you, O God in Zion, and to you shall the vow be performed. O oh, you who hear prayer, to you shall all flesh come. Now, who has a King James? Did you have a King James? Would you read that first verse, two verses in the King James? Praise waiteth for thee, O God in Zion. 
and unto thee shall the vow be performed. O thou that hearest prayer, unto thee shall all flesh come. Amen. Praise waits for you in Zion. <clears throat> Verse 4. Blessed is the man whom you choose and cause to come near, that he may dwell in your courts. We shall be satisfied with the goodness of your house, your holy temple. We'll be satisfied in praising the Lord. Satisfied in praising God. We can praise God with testimonies of what he's done for us, right? And we can praise God for uh, the wonders and the miracles like they were doing on Palm Sunday. We can praise him for that. We should be praising him for what Easter means and, and what Good Friday, the Friday when he hung upon the cross for us. There are so many things to praise him for. And we have a unique ability to praise the Lord above all of his creation. The birds can praise the Lord, and they have beautiful songs. But they don't have the same songs as people have. Because there's a difference, isn't there? We like to listen to the birds. But somehow the human being has the ability to connect reality, spiritual reality, with reality and bring it forth in a melody to exult and praise God. Like the Amplified says, it bursts forth into praise. Bursts forth into praise. So in, in us, we have this ability to be thankful and to, to remember the things that he's done for us and then burst forth into praise. Uh, unrestrained praise. Uh, something that uh, most of us are not too unrestrained these days. We're more restrained, right? I would like to see people more uh, more unrestrained. I said, what do you want them to do, run around? No, I want them to dance and sing and praise the Lord uh, in, a, in a way that's great freedom because of their heart is full. You know, we can come together and we can sing songs and we can sing the newest songs and we can sing the songs just right or we can sing the songs poorly. That's praise to God. But if we don't sing the song from our heart and from our being, then I don't think we're touching heaven with it. I think we can sing a lot of songs, but we need to be able to sing from our heart, from our innermost being. Uh, spiritual worship, the Bible talks about as singing a new song unto God. A new song. Well, we say, well, we sing a new song, we're going to sing in tongues. Well, that's, uh, that's all right. There's new lyrics, there's new melodies, there's new chords, there's new sounds, and yet there's a thing that comes out of our heart that brings forth a praise that only one person can bring forth. It kind of reminds me of the cactus bushes at this time of the year here in Las Vegas. I've got a lot of, of little nubbins on my cactus bushes, which means they're going to flower. And every flower is good for one day. Only one day. The flower is gone at the end of the day when it closes. And there is one that I have out there. It's an Argentine cactus. And it makes a huge trumpet, beautiful crimson trumpet flower. It makes one. The plant makes one, maybe two a year. And it opens up, and it'll open up for nighttime. And it spreads its pollen by the bats. So it's a, it's a night bloomer. And you have to go out in the nighttime to see this flower bloom. By morning, it's done. There is, I mean, it has its own purpose for being beautiful. It has its own purpose for opening up and demonstrating its, I would say, its, its essence, its nature to God. And, and so each of us are individuals. So when it comes to praising God, we all have a different, beautiful picture of praise to present to the Lord. And many times we don't exercise it, but we should be encouraged to exercise it. We don't have to be professional singers. We don't have to even play instruments. We just need to have a heart full of love for God that we'll let spill out of our mouth. And don't think about if you sound like uh, some famous singer. God's not impressed with famous singers. God is impressed with what comes out of your heart. If you're right with, with him and, 
and how thankful and how grateful you are with him. Just burst forth into praise. Praise is due and fitting to God. Praise waits for God in Zion. When he arrives, it's already there. You know, usually when you meet someone, you'll praise them after you know them. But God is so well known that it waits for him in Zion. For the place that he dwells is full of praise. It waits for him. He dwells in us. Our vessels should be full of praise for God at all times. I remember years ago, uh, who was it? Merlin Carruthers is somebody who wrote Prison to Praise. And that there is a, there's a great power in praising God in the midst of your situation. If we go to Habakkuk, Habakkuk gives one of the most beautiful pictures of praise in the last chapter. <laughs> and uh, Habakkuk was coming up against some really bad things, and things are, bad things are happening. I mean, the end time things are happening here. And he says, and this is very, this should be our, our life song. He says, though the fig tree does not blossom and there is no fruit on the vines, Though the product of the olive fails and the yields, fields yield no food, though the flock is cut off from the fold and there is no cattle in the stalls, these are bad times. This is worse than our recessions or our depressions, however you want to call it. When these things happen, yet Habakkuk says, I will rejoice in the Lord and exult in the victorious God of my salvation. No one can take your salvation from you. It's always a source of joy to draw from in the midst of your being. The Lord my God, Habakkuk says, is my strength, my personal bravery, and my invincible armor. He makes my feet like hinds feet and will make me walk, not to stand still in terror, but to walk and make spiritual progress upon my high places of trouble suffering or responsibility. He is my strength, my per everything that I am, he's saying, it all comes from God. He gives me hind feet in high places. That means I can go where it looks like there's no way to go. And if you've ever seen those mountain goats in, in Israel, <clears throat> even some of them here in the high Rocky Mountains, they can go up a hillside where it looks like it's a sheer face rock. But they have hind feet, and they can put their feet in just the right place. And their back foot follows their front foot. So where their front foot was, the back foot goes right exactly there. They can't trip. If the front foot was, was secure, the back foot's going to be secure. I mean, they're able to climb up sheer walls. Hind feet on high places. There's nothing that can stop us if we will become praisers of God. We can get weary and tired, but we still should have a song inside that bubbles up. Amen? Amen. A song inside of us. And, and I may have told you this before because I've talked about this for years, but one, one time I was watching a, uh, a program was talking about the genome, which is the gene strings that make up who we are, the DNA of our lives. And the DNA, if you've ever seen the picture, it's kind of like a spiral. It spirals around itself. And this um, particular scientist had assigned each one of these genes in this string a melody or a note, a tone. Let me be said, tone is better, a note tone. And so as they, as they turned this, it made a melody. And so it said to me that every one of us is a different kind of song to God when we're set to music. And I thought that was... So, I mean, you can just be there, you can lay on your bed, and you don't even have to hum, but your very being is singing itself to God. Isn't that a marvel, isn't that? Have you ever thought about that? Your whole, your whole makeup is made to praise the Lord. And uh, you don't have to think about it, you just need to go. What did, what did God say to Moses? He said, come up on the mountain and be there. He didn't say bring lunch, bring the plans, uh, bring a notebook, bring a, you know all of this. And he said, just come up on the mountain and be there. And then he left him there for 30, 40 days for a talk to him, right? Just be there. Well, he took God took obvious pleasure in the fact that Moses was there. There was something Moses brought to the table that pleased God. Could it have been the melody in his heart? Could it be the melody in your heart? 
that that God knows exactly where you are. His ear is tuned to your song, to your melody, to what you are in Him. And when you begin to praise God, I think if you don't think too much about it, you can praise God in your own melody that's within you, that's resident in your person. That you just begin to praise God with a melody that's in what? It says making melody in your heart to God. Well, your heart has a melody to God. You just need to be able to let it come out, to be abandoned with it, to realize that praise waits for God in Zion. In heaven, that's what they're doing. They're praising God. Aren't they? They're praising God. They're praising God. It doesn't say that they're supplicating. It doesn't say that they're rebuking. It doesn't say that they're... They're um, interceding. What it says is that the saints are praising God. The, 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 they throw their crowns at his feet. They bow down. They praise him. The angels sing and praise, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. It's in their essence. It's their being. Do they get bored doing it? How can you get bored being what you are? If you are a praise to God, and I think Colossians says that we are a praise to God in ourselves, each one of us. We're a praise to God. But we just are a praise to God. We don't have to work hard at being a praise to God. We can allow ourselves to become a great joy to God. We can demonstrate His, His part in us to where we can begin to speak it out. Praise waits for thee, O God in Zion. Unto thee shall the vow be performed. It is, is incredible. We give our word to God that all vows will be performed unto God. No one will pull back on their vows because they're bound with him part and parcel together. Even their DNA structure gives musical acclaim to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. <clears throat> Praise God. Praise waits for thee, O God in Zion. For unto thee shall the vow be performed. It's awesome. It's awesome what God has called us to be, to do, to uh, be able to speak and to be able to share. I mean, you're a testimony walking around uh, if, you, if you've got praise in your heart. There's a great power in praise. If you find yourself in a place like Habakkuk, you need to just wildly abandon yourself to God. I mean, if there's no way out for man, you might as well pray to God. I want to tell you something. <laughs> You want him on your side, don't you? You've got to praise God. If you feel depressed, you begin to praise God. Smith Wigglesworth said once, he said, if you'll start in the flesh, you'll end up in the spirit. So if you begin to praise God, you will be happy. I think myself happy, Paul said, when he stood in front of the magistrates of the rod. I think myself happy. I mean, you guys are not going to steal my joy. I am a praise to God. I'm happy here. Praise the Lord, I'm where God called me to be. It gives me great joy. And that joy is unspeakable and full of glory. And so we can't let things rob us. If you find that your temperature, your thermometer for joy and for praise is dropping, you need to stir yourself up a little bit. We need to begin to think, there's so many things to praise Him for. You can't just think of what we don't have. Because we all don't have something. We all need something. Everybody needs something. But you know what we need is not important compared to what we are to Him. Our praise. I mean, it makes... I think the prayers of the saints, it says, ascend to heaven. And I think those prayers are carried on melodies. I think people sing melodies. And God hears that, the praise and the prayers of His people. And it comes before him like sweet flowing incense. We need to be a part of that heavenly group, don't we? That heavenly praisers, the ones who can praise God no matter what's going on in their lives. We'll not allow an offense to keep them from praising God. We'll not allow lack to keep them from praising God. I mean, I was reading something the other day about the apostles and how they died. And I think it came through the internet to probably everybody that's in the room. And many of them were so happy to die. They were blessed to die. They were honored to die for the name of Christ. It made them happy.
to die for the name of Christ. They had a joy unspeakable and full of glory. They wouldn't allow themselves to be crucified right side up. They, they crucified one of them upside down. He wouldn't allow himself to be crucified in the same form that Jesus was crucified in. He wasn't worthy. He was happy to go any other way. Uh, it, there's a, a thing in the believer that brings praise into our hearts to where uh, we can enter into that heavenly praise. We can be ready to praise God. We don't have to work it up. We can really begin to become grateful, thankful people who not going to let any stones out praise me. How about you? Don't you let the stones out praise me. Why should the rocks be praising them more than me? I have vocal cords. I have things in my head that make resonance. I mean, when you think about how you're made, you have lungs to bring air across those vocal cords who vibrate to make certain tones and qualities. You have ears that can hear. You have the ability to to be able to harmonize, to sing together with a group, to, uh, I mean, you can clap your hands, you can dance your feet, but we have been built to praise the Lord. You can just see it in the human person. When you, when you think about it, what was Lucifer was the angel that covereth, and he was made with various pipes and timbrels and things. He was really the first, I guess, praise leader. We laugh about that in heaven. But he, in himself, he was able to make music, right? And, and then that caused his downfall. But when you think about it, uh, I mean, God made him that way, and he perverted it. And he has given to us, uh, I don't know, I think he's given to us some pretty significant equipment to make music with in ourselves, to sing. To, uh, I mean, it, you'd be surprised what you can do with your voice. Oh, dumb. Denzel, uh, in Mexico, he can yodel. Yeah, have anybody heard of yodeler? He can yodel for Jesus, right? <laughs> There's just a lot of ways that God built us to be able to praise God. Does anybody think they want to share, like, um, a time of, of that they praised God, that they surprised themselves? Did, did anybody ever have that? In, in your in your life, where you was just surprised at, at what uh, uh, when praise spontaneously just burst forth out of your life. Anybody? That happened. I mean, this, either in prayer or something, being crazy, and you just get I, I that way you get carried away, and like it's very very pleasant and it, it's uplifting and it, it's just a great experience. I mean, I wish it happened more. <laughs> Right, okay. What keeps you from having it happen more? My own I don't know. I don't know. Maybe we just don't take time, right? Maybe we don't take time to uh, to praise him like like that. You know, I think you were saying about praying years ago you sent me to a your pastor sent me to a you know, took over twenty years ago. And there was a song there and I just listened to the song that they they sang the song that just said, Ain't no rock going to praise in my place, okay? <laughs> praise his holy name. Yeah. And they sang a chorus, eight no, and, I, and I, it's been like 22 years ago again, and I never forgot that, right? And just remember that when you said that tonight as well. Yeah, that's good, that's good. But some things bubble up in us, don't they? Some ways of praising God. Anyone else want to share a way? I hit my thumb with a hammer and I started saying, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good thing because it had to be within you, right? Because yeah. normally you wouldn't be saying that, would you? No, that's true. Yeah. Praise God. Anybody else want to share something? Anybody? Yeah. The last couple of weeks, I ran across a song a couple of weeks ago, Jesus is the center of my joy. And out of the blue, just during the middle of the day, and I'm not even thinking about all of that song, that song just bubbles up in me. And that has just, I have been so joyous on the inside. It has just been glorious. I love that song. But may I share just a quick testimony of what you were speaking about? 
earlier, when she was speaking earlier of what you can, what God will do with your voice, I was one of those that said, oh, I can't sing, I can't sing. I didn't think I could carry a note. But the first time I sat by a bedside of someone that was dying, and I sang to them a song. It was just me and that patient, and I knew God was listening, but no one else was in the room, and I felt I was safe. And when I turned around, after I finished ministering to the patient, here is, the doorway is full of this patient's family. And all they could say was, how beautiful that was. And I'm going, huh? <laughs> and it was God's anointing, touching my voice for that moment. And he's done that again and again and again. And I just praise him for that. So, I mean, I, re I had to repent for, you know, saying, I can't sing. Because we can do all things through Christ. Amen. Amen. That's a very good testimony. You've, you've seen a lot of people who passed over into, uh, who died, who passed over. Uh, she sung them through. That's very, very unique, very beautiful. Yeah. Praising God. Amen. 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 Anyone else want to share something? No. You don't always get this chance. You want to share something? Yeah, I... Well, come here. <laughs> <laughs> it always gets complicated, right? <laughs> Please come here. Paraphraser. <laughs> I, I like to praise God. That's, um, and he gives me songs. Sometimes I just wake up singing, singing, and just singing. I sing, I bring praise and worship. He gives me song all the time to sing. I, mean, I love it. I cry through it and I sing. People around me might think, what, what's going on? But I'm crying, singing, I'm praising God, I'm happy. Yeah. Yeah. So he gives me and I, I'm not, um, I've not been faithful with it. I was, I'll be writing a lot of songs. It's a confession I have to make. But he gives me songs all the time to sing. All the time. I work at home when I'm washing dishes, I just start singing, I'll sing it through. Maybe till the next day and I realize it was a song from two days ago. <laughs> I never keep record or do something with it. You can sing it into a tape recorder. That would be a good way to do it. And then you can pick it up later, too. Because some things in the spirit we lose. We can't go back and always remember the song, right? Yes, yes. And sometimes I regret it. I will say, well, that song, that song. You know, because right. there are some that are better than others. You keep, but you do, it doesn't come back. Right. So, as, like I said, I've been unfaithful with it, maybe with this confession. Yeah, just get a little tape recorder. And sing it in there. Yeah, and then you'll have it, and then you can go on with it, do whatever you want. Maybe that's why he gave it to Dr. Crystal. <laughs> he did what? <laughs> he gave it to Dr. Crystal. He gave it to Crystal. Oh, I don't know. I think it, I think it runs in the family. But you said something interesting. You said that you wake up at night singing. Yeah, that's, a, yeah, that's another key. Yeah. yeah, is that you wake up in the night singing. It's like your spirit singing. Yes, yeah, not me. It's not you. It's your spirit that's happy and singing. <clears throat> it's an amazing thing, isn't it? I, yeah. lo I love it. Yeah. I love it. Or in the morning when I wake up, I wake up singing mm -hmm. from my spirit, and I wake up singing. It happens a lot. Yeah, it's beautiful. It's yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I didn't know that, but I'm glad you shared that. Yeah. I just had a suspicion, a thought. I kind of felt like you knew what I was talking about. Praise the Lord. But don't be condemned uh, because uh, uh, not everything is for public consumption. Not everything is for everybody else. I mean, God likes to bless us and have fellowship with us. And in singing, we, feel, we can feel his pleasure. And it does make us happy. And so it's 
kind of something we want to encourage uh, ourselves to do. If you wake up in the middle of the night singing in the spirit, just enjoy yourself. Praise the Lord. Don't think anything strange about it because it's, it's a marvelous thing that God has done within his people. We're tuned just exactly properly, each one of us, to be this, this unique melody, this unique uh, song. Uh, if you could see yourself as, as a melody uh, to God, then it would help you to understand that you minister to him whether you, whether you think it's good or not. You, all you have to do is be there. Right? Just be there and let the Holy Spirit just begin to move through your life. Praise the Lord. Well, praise God. That's what I wanted to share tonight. Um, Pastor George, would you come and could you come and sing that song for us as we close? I think we have communion. Let's have communion. And Pastor George will sing us out of here. <laughs> and I sing it, it may sing everybody out of here. <laughs> we do have some uh, lemon meringue pie in the kitchen afterwards. If you'd like to stay and, and fellowship, wow. we'll, we'll cut it up and share it. So uh, we don't have to take it home and eat it. I mean, Tara will have to take that home and eat it. Uh, uh, we'll share it. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our communion table is open to all those who believe in Jesus Christ as the Lord. We um, hold the elements and we take them together. Sing, making melodies in our hearts, singing songs to God, loving Him, letting Him love us. We're satisfied in Him. Satisfied in Christ. Praise the Lord. Praise. Wait for me, oh God, in Zion. Until he shall every mountain be your form. The words are in Psalm 65. Oh, you hear my prayer. Until you
took the blows upon himself, strength for the day. Lightness for the heavy load. For he said, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Take my yoke upon me. And his blood that was shed for us. For the remission of sin. We thank him for it. We praise him for it. When I consider the blood and how it continually cleanses us from all uncleanness. When I consider the price that was paid to redeem the unredeemable, the one nobody wanted, the one that didn't know any better and couldn't find a way out. When I consider it, I am filled with praise. Let us drink together. Wrap your arms around each of us that have been in this place today. And Lord, just help us sing on our beds. Tonight. Wake up praising you with our spirit dancing and singing within us. Oh Lord, praise waits for you and Zion it needs to be released to you. Touch each one with that today. And the sound of my voice tonight. Touch and lift us up. 
In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Amen and amen. Thank you for being with us. We count it a privilege and a sacred trust to bring you the words of truth found in Scripture. It's our prayer that you've been strengthened and encouraged by this message, and it's our heart's desire that you come to know Jesus like never before, and that you're drawn into the Word of God by the Spirit of the Lord working through these sermons. Other teaching CDs, DVDs, books, and brochures are available in our bookstore and media store, or you can purchase them on our website at wellspringministries.com. Our phone number is 702-631-5027. Give us a call if we can serve you in any way. We look forward to our next opportunity to be with you and share with you the wonderful, life-changing things of God. May God richly bless you as you pursue your high calling in Christ Jesus.